میشه Today's podcast is sponsored by Security Unlocked, a new podcast from Microsoft focusing on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and security. Check out the links in the description, or you can check out Paul's face sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little aggressive on my end, but you know what? How you doing? So, I'm now blaming everything that happens in my life to Cosmic Bit Flip. That is my new thing. I appreciate you taking the heat off of me for once. Um, Wait. What has happened? Um, <laughs> when I went to turn on this computer, this lovely machine that sits on this desk and powers this display and puts does up... nothing else for the rest of the day. Yeah. That uh, machine? Yeah. <laughs> is that where this is going? I, I, I turned it on and I was logged out of everything. Not, not just Microsoft stuff, but also like my Google stuff and like everything. So, sorry, that happens, you know. So, for those who aren't familiar with Cosmic Bit Flip, um, this is actually a real issue on airplanes. Um, I'm assuming elsewhere too, but that's where I learned about it was on airplanes. Is that you have code and, and bits going through your your network and stuff or whatever, mm -hmm. and then there's cosmic rays coming down, mm -hmm. and um, they can actually interfere with with some of that information and occasionally it can like flip a bit that's what's called cosmic bit flip and so why did it break well the, the universe said today's the day the piece of radiation hits that little zero makes it a one turns your life upside down next thing you know you're in a sitcom about maybe that's what happened to the first surface book that was more like a sledgehammer bit <laughs> <laughs> i mean Oh, well. I mean, it, well, let's put it this way. If there was that much radiation flipping bits in the Surface Book 1, I think we would all be dead. You could imagine it causing power management issues. You know, that'd be one of the ways this would surface. <laughs> See what I did? <clears throat> Anyways, uh, we got Ignite next week. Two yeah, through four. All of a sudden. Digital. You can click a no. link. This doesn't preclude there being a, an ignite at the end of the year, right? This is like the second ignite. Of... Yeah. So, but it's weird though because it's the it's it's the second of ignite of twenty twenty, but it's the first ignite yeah. of twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Unless you go off two... of Microsoft fiscal year, then. <laughs> but then that, that this would actually be twenty twenty one. Anyways, never mind. That doesn't work. I was trying. I was trying to help him out. Yeah. Well. Um... I, I mean, I found it interesting last fall when they announced they were doing this, that mm -hmm. they had enough to support two shows. Um, so next week should be interesting. Yes. And then there were, we all thought, too, that this might be like the end of build. Or not the end of build, but like, I mean. Maybe, yeah. Build is in, two, well, I guess build's like two months. Well, month and a half. So I don't know. We don't actually know, do we? I mean, it's usually in May. Yeah. But I can tell you one thing. It's not going to be in Seattle. Well, we'll be in Seattle, I guess, technically. But we won't. We won't, we won't be there. Not in May. No, not in May. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Anyways, um, in May. hopefully nobody tried to play Xbox last. Well, actually, I guess eventually, if, depending on where you are in the world, it eventually worked about at 8.30 p.m. But uh, So here's the funny bit. It yeah. would have been okay for me. I did not try to play Xbox last night. Mm -hmm. In fact, I didn't even really hear about this until this morning. But um, it, it turns out if you were signed in, mm -hmm. You were fine, right? It was people who just turned it on and it had to sign in right there, and yeah. th th that's what was failing. So, you know, if you uh, were waiting all day and seven o'clock came along or whatever, and you're like, "Here we go, baby," I hope you had a book. I hope you had a book. That that was me. Just wanted to see. That's why I, you know, I don't play at night. I play during the day. Mm. That's not why I. <laughs> it's, it's nothing to do with why, really. But... Nostradamus over there with his uh, predictions of Xbox. I, well, we don't know why it went down. Um, Microsoft hasn't said. There was some tweets going on about potentially it was part of a larger scale like DDoS attack, not necessarily just against Microsoft, but against a, against a bunch of different companies. Nobody's really said anything, so we can just go off of speculation, which is how also, we've made our careers. <laughs> right. Um uh, I'll inject a little bit of good news into this, as I always do. Um, <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. Uh, 
if you think back to the beginning of the pandemic, there mm -hmm. were actually a couple of outages that happened probably last March or something, right? And, um, you know, given the time we were heading into at the time, it was like, oh, my God, this is like a huge concern. And then um, actually Xbox was up for the rest of the year. And yeah. a lot of times you experience a, a Christmas morning problem related to all the people probably, you know, downloading games and whatever. And that didn't even happen, even with the new console launches. You know, Christmas and the holidays kind of came and went. Mm -hmm. And um, that's good. So, I mean, honestly, you know, this is random. It's too bad. I mean, but, but yeah. it's well, it's like a Thursday night. I mean, you know, nobody wants an outage. Don't get me wrong. Right, but I mean, right. honestly, they have a pretty good track record, I'd say, recently, you know? We say this, and then it's going to be down all weekend. And every I time I log <laughs> in, I'm like, throw it. It's down over the weekend. Cause... No, but uh... <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we will see. Uh <laughs> The other the other fun thing, and I actually did a much longer write-up about this than I really initially thought. So Call of Duty put out a huge update. Not a huge update. Um, big update for, like, the game, whatever. Season 2, stuff dropped for Warzone and, and Black Ops, whatever, Cold War. Um, but the, the funny funny part is is that they said PlayStation 4 owners with 500 gig drives, you can't install both games. And if you want any other games on your drive, just just don't. Like, you can have a Call of Duty box. Or, uh, well, I mean, this this is the problem with the Xbox Series S. Yeah. Oh, it absolutely is. And, um, you know, not that like I'm testing it every day, but I mean, you know, one of the things you kind of test when you go through with it, it's like, well, how many games can you even put on this thing? And and at the time, I was playing Call of Duty, and when you have call like the latest Call of Duty, the the uh, what's it called, Cold War, mm -hmm. plus War Warzone, well, plus uh, Modern Warfare. That's the hard drive, right? There, or the, yeah. the storage. I mean, that's it. You know, that's pretty much it. So uh, it's going to be a problem for Xbox as well. At least, I mean, it's not a good solution, really. Um, at least on Xbox, you can expand the storage with those drives. But they're they're really expensive is the problem. Yeah. And there's no choice, right? There's the one unit. Um, Sony uh, said, and I don't remember the context of this, but they are going to release the ability to, or provide the ability to upgrade the storage in the PlayStation 5 as well. And I mm -hmm. guess it's via an, an M2 slot. So you'll have yeah. to take off the plastic case and you'll be able to put something in there. And that's that's good. I mean, it's yep. way better than nothing. So at least you can do it. Um, you can't do it right now, though. But you will be able to. like Because I think they have to certify or there's only going to be certain drives that are going to be al allowed, quote unquote, because uh, I think they have to have certain performance characteristics, or Mike, or Sony just wants to twist their arm and say, "Hey, you want that thing? Um, you got to pay us some dollars." Yeah, and like everyone else on Earth, I don't have a PlayStation Five, but um, my understanding is that it has the same system that we have on the Xbox Series X and S, where you can attach an external drive to it, but it mm -hmm. can only play legacy games. So, yep, in this case, PS4 games, I guess, right? Um, or is it older games too? I'm not even sure, but. I know on the Xbox, uh, the new Xbox consoles, you can plug in uh, a USB 3 hard drive. You can put Xbox One games on it or older games. Yeah. Other things you can do here, Paul. Whoops. Oh, I've... Nailed it. I nailed it. Anyways, that was going to be a thrilling end here, not to the podcast, but uh, to my friends over at Microsoft Evangelist, Nick and Talia, have a new podcast called Security Unlocked, where they take a closer look at the latest innovations in threat intelligence, security research, and data science with a special focus on demystifying artificial intelligence and machine learning. They actually put out another episode this week called, called Judging a Bug by Its Title, where they talk about ML and, and really diving into bug categorization and um, using smarter things than me to help categorize that stuff. I have not listened to this one yet because it just came out, I think, a day or two ago. But this is, I believe, their last sponsored mid-roll read. We want to make sure to give them a big thanks and check out those links. And mm -hmm. Nick and Natalia are good peoples at the Microsofts. You know, it's not good peoples. <laughs> if it's me, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> if it's... I don't go with that. I, you might totally just Mark Zuckerberg joke in there somewhere. No. It's half, half formed. Uh... Yes. Uh, what else is going on though? There was something else I was going to tell you because and I know I've completely forgot. I know that HP bought Hyper or part of HyperX, which is a, a gaming peripheral company. They didn't buy, which missed a lot of the headlines. They didn't buy like the drives and other stuff from. Cause I believe Kingston owned them, and so I think they just bought like the headphones and, and and peripherals not the drive brand or anything like that so that makes sense to me you know hp's yeah. got a strong gaming pc business um and a good brand 
in Omen. Um, and they, I mean, they, God, they make everything. They make back, back PCs, gaming mm-hmm. chair type things, you know, uh, curved display. They have the whole gamut, you know, they have that incredible Omen X machine, right? Which yeah. Little shaped in an X. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Um, I'll be, I, I hope, well, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if they're planning to kill that brand, the HyperX brand. Because uh, Omen is, I mean, at least in my opinion, it's a relatively strong brand that they've built over the years. I think so. so. Yeah, what else is out there? Like the Predator, is that a... Um, that, that's like that Asus. Asus, or Asus okay. And then there's Dell, ha- Dell bought Dell Alienware. Alienware, yeah, yeah. Long time. What? And then actually, um, Lenovo has a gaming PC line as well. Legion, I think. Legion, yeah. There you go. Why do I know all these and I have no idea why? But then didn't HP buy Voodoo? I mean, the, the Voodoo graphics yeah, or so, whatever. Long time ago. Right. If they did, they obviously got rid of the brand because <laughs> you don't see that anymore. But that sounds familiar. Who was it? Because um, what's the guy? Somebody I know the did. guy who who started the company. What was his name? Um, it's who, probably uh, that's probably what Omen be, came out of. I would imagine it, would have it, it was probably a response to the Alienware thing over at Dell. I'm guessing. You know, I think it's Vape HP. Yeah, HP completes Voodoo PC acquisition. What year was this? Mm-hmm. Is the link even going to open? What year was this? September 28th, but they don't list the year. That's a crime. Do, 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 so it's do, effective do. November 1st. It was announced September 20th. But what year? What if you go to voodoopc.com? Is that URL still up? Nope. Just redirects to HP and is a dead link. It was acquired by Hewlett Packard in 2006. There we go. Um, and then Alienware. It feels like it was longer ago than that. Oh yeah, the other thing I was going to remember too, uh, which is a very important topic, is that Indonesia is getting a new Azure data center, uh, or data center Asia. region, I should say, which is typically at least two data centers. Uh, mm-hmm. but we'll we'll see, and that pushes Microsoft up over. Actually, I think they're already over sixty, but quite a few. Cool. Very cool. What are you doing this weekend, Paul? It's probably where my XCloud games are streaming from, Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> the data center's not even built yet. It's like, I just... uh, I'm gonna just. I've been. I've been spending a lot of time lately updating the book. I'm gonna do mm. more of that. I've got a bunch of machine uh, review stuff to get to, including one I completely zoned on, which I'm embarrassed by. But that'll be up over the weekend. I'm not even gonna tell you what it is. You can, when you realize that my first impressions article was like six months ago, you'll see the problem. But uh, <laughs> anyway, catching up on that stuff. So that's pretty much it. What do you got going on? Um, I think horses and that that is back in action at least as far as i know until my wife tells me otherwise we haven't gotten to ride the ponies in two weeks because it's been too cold or snowy or something um but then i think i think swim lessons start this weekend i don't know I, you not know I, really i'm not it's indoor like they they've been completely locked down like yeah, not happening yeah, yeah. for probably Seems a year like a now. pool would be a relatively safe yeah well you figure there's so pay. much chlorine in the air anyways yeah, just kind just, of uh, just take some deep, deep swigs. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's, healthy. it's healthy for you. <laughs> um, other than that, I don't know. I I was hoping that the weather is going to be a little bit better, but I think it's just going to be kind of overcast. Like when the sun is out, I'm much more willing to go stand out in it than I am. Yeah, we until... actually um, we usually walk by this uh, path or mm-hmm. on this path by a creek, and we haven't been able to get down there for over three weeks because of all the snow. But we actually did go down there today, and it was barely passable. I mean, we could, it was a bit of a bit, a bit more cardio than I was hoping for. But um, mm-hmm. it was just kind of fun to get down there again because it's been, you know, just yeah. so long. So I think we're get, we're getting some melting. We have some some bare patches under the trees here and wow. there. You can actually see some grass. I mean, and then you look over two feet, and there's like two feet of snow. I mean, it depends on you gotta you gotta look at the right place, <laughs> you know, to kind of see it. But a couple little sprouts coming out. Yeah, I think most of ours is gone, but now Sorry. it's just looks like hay in our front yard because the grass. No, no, we still have, dude. I still have a four foot snowbank from the plow. You know. Well, those are your problems, not my problems. But today's podcast was brought to you by Security Unlocked. We want to give a big shout out to them. You can find links in the description and make sure to click them, listen, subscribe, do all that good stuff. We'll catch all of you right back here on Monday, the day before Ignite. 
ring the bell and smash the other thing. Your face? 